Hello everyone, my name is Steve. Today I'm going to introduce you a new network-based recommender system called Neural Collaborative Filtering, published in 2017. I'm going to explain the concept first, and I will show you how to implement it in PyTorch. There are three main contributions for this paper. Firstly, the proposed a neural network framework called Neural Collaborative Filtering, which models the user and item interactions in the latent space efficiently. Secondly, they show that NCF is a generalization of a traditional recommender system called matrix factorization. Thirdly, they demonstrate that NCF outperforms the state-of-the-art models in two real-world datasets. Okay, so let's recall what a recommender system is. A recommender system refers to a system that can predict the future preference for a set of users and items. And here's a table that records all the user and item interactions. Initially, it's all zero because there has not been any interaction yet. And as the user interacts with an item, that is, if a user click on the item or view the item on the web page, it will record one in this entry and so on and so forth for the others. For the one entry, we call it observed interaction because we know that this user has interacted with this item before. And for the zero entry, we call it an observed interaction since we're not sure if this user will interact with this item in the future or not. What we want to know is that among all the underserved interaction items, which of them the user are most likely to interact with. A traditional way to solve the recommender system problem is matrix factorization. Decompose this user and item matrix, aka utility matrix, into two submatrices, the user matrix and the item matrix. For prediction, we simply multiply these two submatrices to reconstruct the utility matrix. And the larger the value on these unobserved entries, the more likely that the corresponding user is going to interact with the corresponding item. And this utility matrix is factorized in a way such that the loss or the difference between the reconstructed matrix and the true utility matrix is minimized. And one commonly used loss function is mean square error, which basically computes the difference in each of these entries, screw them up, and take the average. Essentially, what matrix factorization do is that it project each of the user and item onto a latent space of size k. So each user and item are represented by a k dimension latent vectors. We can measure the similarity between each latent vector by computing a dot product or to find similarity between them. In fact, for prediction, we're computing the dot product for each of the user latent vector and the item latent vectors. However, the paper argued that in the product limit the expressiveness of latent vector. Let's consider the following case. We first focus on the top three rows of this utility matrix. By computing the cosine similarity between these vectors, we know that user 2 and 3 is the most similar, whereas user 1 and 3 is the least similar. We now project these users onto a latent space of dimension 2. Since user 2 and 3 are the most similar, they are close to each other. While user 1 and 3 are least similar, so they are far from each other. Now we consider user 4. By computing the similarity between user 4 and the others, we know that user 1 is the most similar with user 4, while user 2 is the least similar. However, here's where the problem comes in. No matter how we place user 4 around user 1, user 3 winds up being the farthest from user 4, while in reality, user 2 is the most different from user 4. The example shows the incompetence of inner product in modeling the complex interaction between user latent vectors and item latent vectors. So, the paper proposed a new neural net architecture called Neural Collaborative Filtering. You can see that in the input layer, both the user and item are one hotly coded. Then they are projected onto the latent space with the embedded layer. 
The neural CS layers basically can be any kind of neural connections. Multiple layer perceptron, for instance, can be placed here. The paper claims that with the complicated connection in this layer and the nonlinearity, this model is capable of learning the user and item interactions in latent space properly. You might wonder how matrix factorization is a special case of NCF. We replace the neural CF layers here with a multiplication layer, which performs animal-wise product on its two inputs, and we also set the weights from the multiplication layer to the output layer to be a unit matrix of all ones with dimension k by y. In addition, we set the activation function of the output layer to be a linear function. We have the following equations. Y hat ui denotes the predictive value of the unobserved entries for user u and item i. Pu and qi are the lectern vectors of user and item. And this sign right here is the item-wise product. Since k is a unit matrix, it assigns weight equal to 1 for each of the entry in the matrix that it's being multiplied on. So the value be inside this parenthesis is because the dot product between QPU and QI. Since L is a linear activation function, the input equals to the output. So we have this final form, y hat ui equals to the dot product of PU and QI. And this is the exact same form of matrix factorization that I have shown you previously. The, prediction, the predicted value for each of the entry is the dot product of the corresponding user latent vector and item latent vector. So the final model they propose looks like this. It contains two submodules. In order to introduce more nonlinearity, they include a multiple perceptron modules here, in addition to original met uh, generalized matrix factorization layer. And they fuse these two modules with a concatenation layer followed by a sigmoid activation function. So this shows the performance of their final model. They evaluated on two different evaluation metrics, hit ratio and NDCG. You can see that the red line with diamonds here represent their final model. It performs the best on two different data sets, movie lens and Pinterest. The paper also shows that pre-training does help. So what they do is that they train GMF and MLP individually store their weights when training is done and use those weights as the initial point for training the new MF model. And you can see that pre-training gives you better performance compared to without pre-training. I'll show you how to implement it in PyTorch. In PyTorch, you only need to specify the network structure and the forward function. So here comes the structure. Uh, we specify the input layer for the GMF and NLP part. Then we use module list to create MLP layers by theirs. At the end, we have a sigmoid activation function. For the forward function, we first let the user indices and item indices pass through the embedding layers. For the GMF part, we use torch mole to perform LMOI's multiplication. One thing to know is that I use the dropout layer to regularize the network, which is not used in the original paper. I found that using this dropout layer will improve the performance of the model. Similarly, uh, there is also a dropout layer at the end of the MLP modules. And then these two tensors will be concatenated and pass it to the upper layer and sigmoid activation function. That's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this paper review. This is my first time filming this kind of video, so if you have any questions or comments, please leave it below. If you like this video, please click on like or subscribe. See you next time.